Hello and welcome to the Actual Tech Media Demo Cast. On today's event, I'm excited to be joined by VMware featuring the VMware Cloud Foundation. Now, before we jump into the demo, there's a few things you need to know about the demo cast. The demo cast is a new regular series of events from Actual Tech Media where you'll learn about one product, one technology, you'll see it in action, and you'll do it all in hopefully under 30 minutes. And the coolest thing about this event is, you know, in the time that it takes to eat your lunch, we're going to skip right through the salesy stuff. We're going to just jump right into the technology. The Twitter hashtag for the event is DemoCast. You guessed it. Um, it's brought to you by Actual Tech Media. And I am David M. Davis. You can follow me on Twitter there. Send me a message. Uh, glad to talk to you anytime. If you have questions during the event, please use the GoToWebinar questions box there and ask those questions. We have an awesome VMware expert on the event today to answer those questions. We want this to be a really educational, uh, relatively informal, fun event. So um, that's the demo cast. Thanks for taking time out of your day to join us um, today. I will be your moderator. I'm David M. Davis, a time V expert from Actual Tech Media. You might know me from my plural site, video training courses on mostly on VMware vSphere. And I'm excited today to be joined by Mr. Ryan Johnson. Uh, also known as 1030 AM on Twitter. He's a staff technical marketing architect at VMware. Ryan, thanks for being on. Thanks for having me on, David. Long time no see. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I know you have a slide uh, talking a little bit about yourself later, so we'll just we'll save your contact information and, and your story for, uh, for that slide. So uh, sure. ex exciting demo today talking about VMware's Cloud Foundation. With that, I'm going to hand control over to Ryan to take it away. All right, show my screen and minimize all my stuff and we will get started. So the first thing guys, is because I want to kind of level set, I do have a couple quick slides real quick and then we'll kind of get, get into the demos. So uh, it is May the 4th, uh, May the 4th be with you for all the nerds out there, um, <laughs> including myself. Uh, so again, like David said, my name is Ryan Johnson. I'm a, a staff technical marketing architect uh, at VMware and my primary focus is focusing on the software, the, the software defined data center, the culmination of how do we take all the aspects of the pieces and parts of a software defined data center from compute, storage, networking and management and how we put those into um, a unified uh, FPDC platform. And, and what my focus is on primarily on VMware Cloud Foundation as well as VMware Validated Design. Um, you can reach me on Twitter at, at 10.30 a.m. or if you feel like email, emailing me, I'm happy to answer questions. Uh, it's johnsonryan at vmware.com. So um, to kind of get started, um, people, a lot of people have heard about Cloud Foundation. We kind of had our, our coming out party, if, if you will, um, around VMworld last year in 2006. 2016 in Vegas, and uh, it was mentioned a lot up on stage. But the whole goal around Cloud Foundation is you know, how do we how do we create a um, take to create a standardized, integrated, unified approach to building a software fund data centers, you know, functional layers, right? Um, and so what we've done is created a standardized uh, cloud design that's based on a pre-validated, tested by VMware, all using all our best practices, our best practices best practices that come from our VMware Valley designs and putting that into a system that is a full full stack, right? Um, uses modern in, modern infrastructure. So everybody's probably familiar with, you know, hyper-converged infrastructure, taking compute and storage and putting those together. Uh, we actually go to a next level, um, what we like to call the kind of the next generation HCI because we're also including uh, NSX, right? So network, layer, layer two through layer seven network virtualization built into the, um, the cloud, the cloud foundation platform. We make it very modular, very, very elastic. We can expand, contract, uh, delete work, uh, delete resources, um, the ability to provision things such as uh, uh, Horizon on top, so we can do uh, virtual desktops. Um, and so it's just it's a single soft, software stack, right? vSphere, you know, the compute virtualization, vSAN, NSX. And this other piece called FTDC Manager. And what I really wanted to understand is it's not just a software bundle. It's not like you just take the, those, those three things at the top there and, and have Cloud Foundation. It's, it's a full integrated stack. And this, this FTDC Manager is really the sweet spot um, that gives us the ability, it's an engineered solution, gives us the ability to automate the entire stack. And we'll talk about that in just a moment here. But, you know, like I said, um, it, this Cloud Foundation really unifies 
um, everything together for a complete SDDC platform using vSphere, uh, vSAN, right, NSX for layer two through layer seven network services, and this SDDC manager uh, piece, this new, this new capability. And it can be used both for the on-premises private cloud implementation, uh, but it's also used uh, in the public cloud or for the as a service. So you've probably heard about IBM Bluemix and they, they had a cloud foundation right, um, option. Um, uh, IBM Bluemix, you've heard um, the things around AWS, uh, VMware Cloud on AWS, you've heard VMware Cloud Foundation on top of uh, vCloud, Air, vCloud Air and vCloud Air Network Partners. Um, we, but those are other, other routes to market on for the, the public cloud right, space. Um, and so the whole benefit is make it, how can we make it really quick and easy for you to deploy a private cloud really quick, really fast, give, the, give you that, that hybridity so you can link the, the, the on-premises to the public um, cloud offering as well. And just make it really, really super fast for you to pull you know, your apps and services um, on. And one of the things I want to kind of focus on, and where we're going to get the demos here, is we automate the entire deployment and bring up of the entire stack for you. And you can get the, you can achieve achieve it in kind of two different ways for the on-premises side, which we'll talk about here. For the on-premises side, you can kind of build your own, um, so to speak. You can get all the pieces and parts that are on the, the Cloud Foundation compatibility guide. Um, which are listed on the standard compatibility guide. Um, and you can rack and assemble that hardware, right? Um, you can also get the same things through things like Dell EMC with a VX rack SDDC, SDDC, where it's all uh, pre configured for you. But what we're going to focus on is when you bring this in and you stand this up, you have the ability to bring everything online. You, it just starts up. Um, this new solution called SDDC Manager comes online and it looks and has introspection to all the systems that are built into all the, um, the compute nodes that are built, all the switches that are built into the design, and it validates that, hey, is everything online, is it ready to be consumed? And then providing literally just a few screens of inputs, uh, very specific inputs, like, hey, what's your DNS? You know, what's your NTP? What, what do you want to call this thing? We can automate the entire deployment for you. And then we actually create, you know, your, what we call management domain. Think of it as a management cluster. And we prepare vSphere, NSX, vSAN, bring everything online for you so that you're now ready at that point to operate your SDDC and start taking physical resources and carving them up into logical capacity so you can do things like put, put apps on top of them, right? The traditional apps or the new cloud native apps. And one of the cool parts about the whole process is that this SDDC manager has the ability to simplify our day, you know, not only our day zero, but also through day, day two operations for the entire stack. So um, one of the really cool pieces, you know, we bring it up, we configure it, we deploy it, we configure it, we do all policy-based, you know, con uh, configuration and provisioning. But we have this whole concept of patching and updating. And one of the key goals is how can we make it easy for our, our, our customers to patch and update the entire stack, right? Instead of looking at KB articles and do I update my NSX manager before I do my PSC, is it, you know, which one do I do first and which ones are compatible? We make that easy because we do it for you, we validate and test it and do that entire operation for you. So under a couple clicks, uh, you can update the entire, entire environment with a couple clicks and we'll show that in the demo here. So with that, I'm gonna flip over uh, to some demos. And these are these are demos that are based off some um, some video recordings. So these are what we call uh, <coughs> some of our new offline demos that we're working on. Uh, I see my, uh, my 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 director's on, so uh, this is one of his his, his babies. But what we're going to start here is is we've already done in this in this demo we've already done this imaging process. We've already laid down kind of ESX and, and um, bootstrapped our nodes so we can actually start bringing these things on online to this bring up process. And here, um, I can see that I've got 12 nodes, I've got a management switch, and I've got two top of rack switches that have all been imaged, they're in ready, all of the code, code's been put down for ESXi, a bootstrapped first node, and put some uh, aspects of SDDC manager, some other, some other ISA, um, OVAs on top of those, and I've actually configured the switches, all right? And the cool part about SDDC manager, not only can it configure the vSAN ready nodes that are sitting there, those 12 vSAN ready nodes, it also has the ability to configure the management switch and the top of rack switches and spine switches. So it configures the VLANs, the flag aggregation groups, um, et cetera, for me. So it's a very, very powerful tool. What we're going to pick up here is actually show the process of configuring Pod Foundation. So we'll start, you know, um, you'll have a jump box, you're connecting to your management switch, and we'll connect to Cloud Foundation's initial bring up UI. Uh, and what we'll do is that we'll set the, set the time for the time for this. 
So we'll say, you know, the time in this example when I recorded it was in December of 2016. We'll set the time, you know, approximate time here. And this will allow it to go through and set the time on all the com components. So this SDC manager sets the time and uh, time on all the ES6i hosts, the switches, as well as the, uh, the database instance, the, the Cassandra-based um, instance that's running on it. We'll click on continue here. And what's happening in the background is now we're doing this power on system validation. We're checking to make sure all the hosts are in a ready, a ready state on the condition of the software bundles that are that will configure for uh, NSX, vSAN, uh, ESX, and any other uh, ancillary components are ready to be deployed <coughs> and configured. We'll check the status of um, our physical resource manager, which manages kind of the inventory of all the physical assets, as well as the hardware management service that gives us the ability to kind of talk to things like the switches inbound and out of band, as well as things such as our, our switches and do interesting things with those. We'll click on continue here. You can see the processes that have run, and we'll put in our, our username and password. And by default, it's the administrator, vSphere, vSphere Local. We'll put in that password, uh, password which is a VMware 123 uh, in the docs, right? And then we'll, we'll log in. We'll obviously accept our ULO after we've read that entire, entire agreement, and it's going to ask us for a new username and password. Here, we're basically creating a super user, right? Outside of the administrator, vSphere Local. And in this example, I created one called SDDC Admin. I'll give it a unique path, unique complex complex password, and I'm off to the races, and I'll create my super user here. This is just an addition. Instead of continuing to use the administrator views for local, um, we can go ahead and establish a, another user. Obviously, when you get done, you can still link this into, say, Active Directory to use Active Directory authentication. And here are presented with things like, hey, what do you want to call this rack? And I named this rack, and the first rack in this instance, VCF Rack 01. I gave it an interesting name. My company is VMware here. I'll call SDDC as my, my, I mean, my, de my, de my department, if I will. Um, and then it's going to ask me for my root domain name, right? So this thing, like your company name. In this instance, I chose VMware.com. <coughs> this is the company I work for. It's my DNS that I have access to. Um, but from there, the Cloud Foundation itself, the instance is going to have a subdomain. And for this environment, I did stdc.vmware.com. You could do, you know, uh, rack, vcf rack onecom uh, whatever is going to fit into your environment. Uh, SSO domain with the common vsphere.local. You could change that if you wanted to, but we'll use vsphere local. You can apply your license, licensing as needed for SDDC manager, and we'll click next. And here we have the ability now to start putting in things such as our, our VLANs and our IP addresses, our DNS and such. And what this is going to do is allows us to say, I want to use a specific VLAN and subnet, uh, subnet mask for um, right now the management, the management portions of the stack. So think about vSphere. It's got a, the management VM kernel interfaces. I'm setting the gateways. I'm setting the DNS that's going to be used here. Uh, secondary DNS as well as NTP, and it's setting this programmatically. But one of the other cool, interesting things it's doing, it's also programming the switches because we use this concept called the hardware management service. It has the ability to talk to the switches and configure the VLANs, configure the, the lag aggregation groups, any of the uplinks for me on, on the switches. I have this ability to use defaults, and what default basically does here is it, it goes, and goes ahead and pre-configures a set of IP addresses and VLANs. Uh, I'm going to override the VLANs, kind of keep something consecutive here. So 2201, I see the addresses that is pre-selected. You can change that. You don't have to use the use the defaults. You could use your own IP, IP scheme if you want to. But for this demo, I want to make it really quick and easy to, to show. I'll put in my new, um, my new, uh, my new uh, VLAN here. So I did, I did vMotion. I did a vSAN. I'm doing one for VXLAN, my, my NSX overlay. Put these guys in. And lastly, it's going to ask me for my data center, data center uplink. So this is my uplink, connecti uh, uplink connectivity to my corporate network. This is basically my connectivity from my tours out to my data center, my data center fabric. And I'll give it a name called up, uh, Uplinks here, and I'll give it a subnet, um, a subnet, um, a subnet mask, as well as a uh, gateway in the next couple screens here. So 164.0, I'll give it a slash 22. I'll use a slash 22 here. And then I'll provide it a, a gateway here. All right. And once that's completed, here, we're ready to move forward. 
and we'll say what kind of connection we use. We have the ability to use an L2 or L3 connection up to our, uh, our data center network. We chose to use an L2. We'll enable the multi-link aggregation. And I'll put in the ports um, on my tours from 51 to 54 are going to connect, connect up and give me my data center connection. And what that is, will be 40 gig. Those are 40 gig ports. All, right. all this is pre-configured in the client. And here I can see the, the, the last part is, is showing me, hey, these are all the VLANs and networks that I put in. For, in for this process. And what happens here is it has the ability to do an IP address management, um, and it basically pops in here and says, here's your vCenters, your PSCs, here's the IP addresses, as well as the DNS names that are going to be assigned to those. So if you actually would see that here, for example, at the very bottom, it says rack one psc 2svdcvmrcom It's pre-configured the DNS for me, and it's pre-configured an IP address that's going to be associated with that. So it confirm. And what's going to happen is it's going to go out and begin to configure the entire the entire stack. And because it's an uh, automation engine, it's, it's configuring everything for me. I can see here that it's actually running a series of processes. Everything that you would typically do manually, whether it's setting up the host, deploying your PSCs, deploying your vCenters, deploying NSX, uh, uh, establishing NSX, your your um, you're preparing your host, you know, creating your segment IDs, creating your controllers, um, deploying log insight, integrating log insight with all the aspects, right? Um, even deploying on your own operations, all those aspects would be typically, you know, be a manual processing and take, you know, could take days. We can do within a matter of a couple, couple hours by automating the entire process. So here at the end of this process, it's deployed, in it, it's deployed vSphere, it's configured vSAN, it's deployed my PSCs, my, my NSX managers, my controllers, um, deployed VRealize Log Insight, VRealize Operations, and it has integrated the entire set and has prepared everything for consumption. It's even done, it's even done the VDS and uh, default storage policies. So here I can click on this next link and it'll take me to the uh, configuration. So I'll, I'll log in now with my administrator at vSphere Local. And this is a really kind of cool part, um, which actually will get, we'll hold it better a little later on. We log in with that administrative use for local account, and it'll prompt us, prompt us to change the passwords, which is actually kind of cool um, to, to see because from here, we'll connect to connect to the appliance. Um, I do want to make that we do want to make this a little bit a little bit easier. But what you want to see here is we'll connect to the appliance, log in, log in, and we'll uh, go to the home VREC bin, and inside here we'll see a, a shell script, and this shell script for VRM CLI gives the ability to look up, look up all the passwords for the entire system. So think about all the passwords that are used for NSX manager, edges, um, administrative use for local, host, et cetera. It gives us the ability to bring all those back. And these are all the default passwords you see here. But one of the cool parts is that we have the ability to do a rotation. We have the ability to go in and say, I want to rotate all the passwords. And it will go through and rotate everything, every, uh, rotate all the passwords. And then you have the ability to look at them, those passwords, uh, if, you, if you want some of the VRM appliance and see that everything now has a unique password. And you can do this anytime. Uh, you can change passwords. You can change passwords for individual components, but it gives the ability, when we get done, we have now have nice new complex passwords, no more default passwords in our, in our kit. And once we log in here, we now see SDBC managers online. I have a, a, a workload domain. I can look at this workload domain and see there's my management workload domain. This management workload domain consists of vSphere, and vSAN, and NSX, all pre-configured for me. Um, I have four hosts, four hosts with a specific amount of capacity. Uh, here I can see that uh, these are all the IP addresses, again, that are, were used in the DNS entries. I can see my vCenter info, and there's a link for vCenter here that will take me out to the vCenter instance that's been deployed for me. By clicking on the vCenter, it will use a SAML authentication, take me directly to the vSphere and authenticate me. Um, I can go in here and click on the hosting, hosting clusters. And from here, I can expand out and see that this entire setup here with the four hosts, uh, all the appliances specifically for SDC manager, NSX, NSX, the controllers, everything's been provisioned, provisioned for me. Um, I can look at this, look at the storage configuration. Right now, looking look at the host configuration. I go down to storage, and I'll see that I have um, a, a location for my vSAN data store has been deployed for me. Right, because we're not that's usually the primary storage, and I can see that um, you know, I've got um, my storage, I've got uh, 33 terabytes, 30, 33, 34 terabytes, 34 and a half terabytes, uh, of it, um, uh, capacity 33 available. I can look at my networking, I can see that this is auto automatically pre configured my VDS for the management domain, 
Uh, so if I expand, expand here, you'll see the port groups that have been configured. All this has been done automatically. I've really, by putting a couple, couple cool nifty parameters, it's done the work for me. And it's also gone through and configured NSX. So it's prepped the host, it's configured, and it's deployed my controllers, my three controllers. It's even gone through and configured the VX, the, the VXLAN overlay. On, on the host, as well as my, um, as well as configuring my segment, I, my segment IDs, and my initial transport zone. So you can see segment IDs, and you see the transport zone has been configured. So really, really cool with them. All that, all that for me to make my life far easier. Now, once we've done that, we've, we've now established the foundation for um, the software-defined data center. I've got all my, my, my big management, my nice management cluster there. It's got vSAN, it's got VRLIZE operations, all my management pieces can run there. But now I need to run, now, now I need to do something and I want to run workloads, right? I want to, you know, have, take additional, I had 12 nodes, I wound up using four of them for management. I've got additional nodes out there, I want to do something with them. I want to put workloads on them. And to that, for that, we create workload domains. So the next demo is actually showing the process of creating a workload domain. I'll flip over here real quick. And inside the user interface, once you log into the SDC manager interface, there's this blue box that says add workload domain. And you have two options. You've got one for configure VDI and configure VI. And VDI is for virtual desktops. And, one, and VI is for virtual infrastructure. We're, in this instance, we're going to configure one for virtual infrastructure, but it's good to, good to note that the configure VDI does the same thing, but it also gives us the ability to automatically layer in on top horizon and app volumes on top of it for you by also asking for some cool, um, cool parameters. So in here, we create, uh, say configure VDI, and I want to give it this new domain, this, this what we call workload domain. And think of a workload domain as taking physical resources that are available and carving them up and putting them into logical capacity or vSphere clusters or multiple clusters, put them in a logical pass capacity. So I basically said, I want to create a workload domain. I'm going to call it TMM01 here, and I'll give it an organization, a name of, of VMware. <coughs> and it, pre it presents me with some very basic uh, questions. It says, hey, you know, what do you want the performance and availability to be? And what these basic two questions are asking by providing, um, you know, say I want balance, balance here, or I want, you know, high availability. What it's doing is actually configuring the default storage policy-based management for vSAN. It's configured the vSphere HA policies as well as vSphere DRS, uh, strike width and things like that, uh, as well as percent object, object reservation on top of vSAN, uh, top of vSAN. By asking you just a couple of questions, it's applying policies on the back end during the automation flow. So here I'll say, you know, how much capacity I need, and I'm going to fill this out and say, you know, I want to, uh, you know, 150, 150, uh, 150 um, gigahertz. I want, you know, 1152 gigs of memory, and I want uh, 10 terabytes of storage, right? I can see my available and my total here. I'll still tell, I'll tell it to use my default networks, the same networks I created earlier, just to make this demo go a little bit quicker. Give it an uplink for my uplink network. And from here, I can see that it's going to establish a new um, a VDI, uh, a new infrastructure, um, virtual infrastructure workload domain based off three hosts, right? In my first rack that I created, it's going to take host 102, 104, and 105 and create a workload domain. And I click finish, and I'll click confirm, and in the background, it starts a workflow. So the SDC manager is now doing the heavy, the heavy lifting for me. And if I go here and look at my task in the interface, I can see that I have a task running here to create uh, this new resource, this VI resource pool TMM01. I click on that and go to my subtask, and I can see all the tasks that are running in the back, were running in the background. I went through really fast here, but what it's doing is it's taking hosts that are available in my capacity of physical hardware, it's carving up an up to logical capacity. It's, laying down, it's deploying a vCenter, it's linking up with my platform service controllers, it's deploying NSX in the same manner it did before, it's laying down my NSX controllers, configuring my VDSs, configuring uh, my, my vSAN data store and all the policies, uh, HA, DRS, all that being done for me, and even integrating it into Realize Operations and, and Log Insight. So it does that in a matter of, you know, uh, I think, I think in, on a physical environment, it's like 20 to 30 minutes in, in like a four, four node here. So it does it really, really super fast, and I'm not having to do anything, like anything to touch it and do it. It does it for me. It get, makes it easier for me to, to get to an operating model far faster. And now I can see that I have one uh, VI workload domain down here. 
and look in the details, I can say there it is, TMM01 deployed. I can see that the, there's the virtual infrastructure details. I've got you know 20, uh, 26 terabytes of storage. I've got you know, there's my mono CPU and my memory and my status. Here I can see my vCenter, and by clicking this vCenter option here, it does the same thing. And now it's taken me out to the vCenter that's specifically for this environment. It's actually creating a separate vCenter in instance and linking those under a common SSO domain. Here I can see, you know, I have three hosts that down here at the bottom. Three hosts are available. I can see the virtual machines. I have my NSX, uh, NSX controllers have been deployed on top of the workload domain. I have my data stores here, my, my vSAN data store. I can see my distributed switch has been configured for this specific workload domain, TMM01 here. And I can look at the networks that have also been configured for that, con configured for that switch. All those ports have been con configured for me and it's been done automatically through SDDC management. I had to do very, very little to, do, to get it to that point. Um, if I look at my host and clusters, I can see now I have two, two vCenter instances, one for Rack VC1 and one for Rack VC2. Uh, VC2. At Rack VC2 is the, um, S is the vCenter specifically for my new workload domain, but they're in a link mode here using an enhanced link mode, and I could, you know, I could have visibility to, to both of those. But down here, you can see that I have three hosts. I have my NSX, man my NSX controllers are deployed, and my cluster is ready to go. So um, the other piece I want to show is there, there's always the case where you may get to a point and say, you know what, I, I really, I needed more, I need more resources, right? That first three node, three node, three node workload domain, you know, you're deploying workloads to it and, and things are going well, um, but you know, you start to need more capacity, right? Maybe you want more availability settings because it was a three node vSAN and if I have a host failure and I'm doing maintenance, I, I want to make sure I have enough availability. And you know, you want to add more resources. Well, if there's additional, you know, I look here and I've had 11 hosts available, right? 11 hosts in this environment. Sorry, it wasn't, it wasn't 12 in this, in this recording. Um, 11 hosts, right? I've already consumed uh, seven of them. So I want more, I have more available capacity. So I have the ability to go to my workload domain here and I'm going to go to that TMM01. Now in this, in this instance, I actually had four, four nodes. I'm going to add enough resources for five. I go to TMM01 here. And see here in this in this this demo, it's a separate demo. Uh, there's there's four nodes available in this environment, right? But I'm going to add. Just say for the sake of sake of this demo, say it had you know tons of resources being used, and I wanted to add more capacity. That's not a problem. Right? We can totally we can totally do that by like going into this domain here, workload domain. I have this option to expand the workload domain. I also have the ability to delete it if I wanted to. Um, but we're going to choose the ability to expand the workload domain, add more capacity, and that. Additional capacity could be in terms of I want to add more CPU, memory, or storage. I'm actually going to tell it that I want to add, you know, this additional, you know, 55 gigahertz. I want to add another 384 gigs of RAM, another 1.5 terabytes of storage, right? What that's going to do, put the next here, it's going to go through and calculate, okay, that's a new capacity. We're going to add one more host. We're going to add host 109 here, right? We're going to pick, pull, pull this, one, pick this from the pool, and we're going to go connect to the out of band, connect to the in band, configure it, and add it to your vSAN cluster, prepare it for NSX, bring that into all those processes that you typically have to do uh, manually, we're gonna do it for you and do it really, really super quick. So I hit confirm, it launches the workflow in the back end, and I'll go take a look at that workflow next, right? So here, I'll go down here and look at a workflow that's running, and I say expanding TMM01, right? We created it before, now we're expanding it, I can look at the subtask, and I can see what's happening in the back in the back end. It's been add, it's now adding the, adding that to my resource pool, right? Uh, or it's adding that 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 physical resource uh, now into my logical pool and in my into my workflow domain. And what happens here? I'm going to go to the dashboard. All right, I can look at my view details, and I can see that this has been ex expanded. And now I have five hosts, right? And previously saw in the in the piece of I had four. I don't have five hosts because I've added another, essentially another, 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 another node. If I go here and look at my um, my web client and click on refresh, you'll see it go from four nodes. Sorry, four. So you go from four nodes to five. And now I have five nodes, right? So this this dot thirty four has been added. This one sixty dot thirty one sixty dot thirty four. That previous one nine two one six eight one hundred dot one oh nine number that you saw previously was actually the out of band management IP address. And here we've actually can now conf now configured it with uh, all its proper proper um, addresses uh, for consumption on the management side. 
So that was how simple it is uh, to expand the workload demand. I could have said I wanted, you know, you know three terabytes and then added an, a, 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 a sixth node, but it's ma it makes it that simple to deploy. Now, the next thing I want to show, if I can bring this online here, let me flip to the other demo. Give me just a moment. Thought I had it synced up, but I don't. So the next thing I'm going to show how easy it is to actually do patching and updating in the environment. And when you think about it, when you do, you have an environment and you want to do patching and updating, um, it's a bit of a process, right? When you look at a standard SDVC, you know, hey, I want to update. I got a vSphere, I got vSAN, I got NFX, I got all these different pieces. But um, one of the cool parts that Cloud Foundation does is it takes the complexity out of doing any updates, right? Where you're not having to look at KBs and say, you know, do I do my NFX manager before my PSCs, or do I do, I do my PSC before my vCenter, and you know, what's the what's the right order and process to do it? Um, and think about how much time that takes to do, right? It's a very, you know, very manual, you know, hands-on keyboard process. What if we can make that much simpler? And in Cloud Foundation, we do that um, by having this whole concept of lifecycle management. You see this lifecycle option down here. And we actually give the ability to, to have SCC manager communicate with, communicate with um, uh, my VMware and be able to download bundles. And it's here I see I have a, this new bundle, right? It's been downloaded. Inside this bundle is software for NSX, vSAN, or whatever pieces that need to be updated. Um, so here I can see a software bundle. Um, this one is for two dot, the 2.1 software bundle. I can open it up and it shows me specifically what's inside the bundle, the software, or what's specifically inside this update for SDDC Manager itself. And I can see the different versions and, and whatnot here. Um, but I give the ability, it gives me the ability to download, right? So download the, the new bundle. I'm going to say, yep, I want to download this bundle, right? And it will download it from my VMware, right? Um, so that I can apply, apply this new, this new code base down. I'm going to do the same for the VMware software here. So it's going to download. And once it finishes downloading, I'll see that I, I, I'll, it flashes up real quick here. I'll see that I have new updates, but I want to look at my inventory. And this lab, I actually had a TMM01, TMM02 workload domains, but I can see my management domain. And my management domain has this version of software 1.2, as you can see here, right? Version 1.2 of VRM and HMS. I want to update that, right? I want to take that to the latest, greatest version of the software. If I go to update here, I can say I want to update my SDDC manager. I'll say expand this. And you see here it says I want to take it from 1.2 to 2.1 for both of these components, these core these core core components. By clicking next, I can schedule. I can say I want to run it now, basically, or schedule it on say Saturday at 2 2 p.m. if I wanted to. And what happens is I can schedule the update, and in the background, the update's going to be running right based on my schedule. I can view the update details, and it will take it from being this update scheduled to queued to actual updating. And this flashes by fairly quickly in the in the demo here. And you can see that it takes it from Took it from 1.2 to 2.1, and it completed the update. And that's how simple it is using this using this uh, this interface. And we can do the same also not only just for the software specifically for Evo SD, for Cloud Foundations um, SDDC manager components, but we do the same thing for other components such as um, NSX, vSphere, vSAN. So the same process applies here. I'll click here, expand. I want to take these NSX components and these and these hosts and update them to the latest version. I can select a date. I can schedule the update, see what's scheduled. And in the background here, all these are going to be updated to the latest, latest, latest rev, right? From 6.0 to this, from one build number to another, it's completed. And you can see everything has been updated and completed here. And that's just how simple, simple it is. So, so SDC Manager, just kind of, kind of, kind of quickly wrap up is, you know, it gives us now ability to have a fully integrated stack to really unify the SDC, give you all the power and capabilities of compute virtualization, storage virtualization, layer two through layer seven, layer seven network and security, um, and this nice cool part where this man the management. So we can do lifecycle management from everything from the bring up, right? From day zero to day two, from the bring up to expansion, deletion, attaching and updating, really maintaining that entire environment throughout its life cycle. 
It has the ability to talk to not only the physical systems on inbound and outbound, it also talks to the host, but it also talks to the, the specified ready ready switches that we use and the ready systems, um, configures the, the, the port groups and networks, all the uplinks for you to make it really work as a system. Um, and that's one of the really cool, powerful pieces about that. Um, so you can run your app, you can run, so you can run your traditional apps, you can run your new cloud native apps or what have you. You can take this and say, you know what, I want to expand this out to the hybrid cloud. So maybe you want to use IBM Blue, uh, Blue Mix with Cloud Foundation. You want to extend that to hybrid cloud. You can bridge these two environments together. You can put virtualized automation on top of this and by simply saying, hey, those workload domains that I can spin up real quickly from available resources, I want to link realize automation as to, to connect to them as endpoints so I can now consume those new workload domains as endpoints to, to provision new workloads. Um, so very, very powerful tool. Um, I will leave you with um, a URL right here down at the bottom. You can learn more and get a, a, v, a VMW, uh, <laughs> vmwa.re slash vcf. Uh, what that will do is take you to a new reference site that Kind of threw up um, this week. Uh, let me see if I can see if I can bring it online here. Oh, yep, I do have it right here. A quick reference guide basically has a link to everything. So if you go to the vmwa.re/vcf, it'll take you to this take this page. Uh, William Lamb has a has a blog post about it on his site. But the product page, uh, release notes and documentation, uh, how to follow us, you know, other videos, uh, where you find us on Twitter. We we do have a blog. Uh, we have events that are always being scheduled with social labs or things like this demo cast. Um, where can you get more things like our data sheets? We have an uh, HOL that has a simulation. You actually go through, get the ability to go through some of these exact demos um, and simulate simulations. If you take this hands-on lab, it's been updated as of April 21st, I believe. <coughs> there's a fundamentals course. Um, there's, a, there's a digital poster out there you can down, download. And we have tons of new videos that we just released last week, I believe. Uh, some ex some overview videos on storage, network, a technical overview, and then uh, demo the demo videos of the same process, these same process I showed you, and more with a with a with a voiceover. So with that, I'm going to open up for any questions that anyone may have. Awesome demo. Thanks you. Thank you so much, Ryan. Really, really cool stuff. Uh, and I'm sure, you know, like me, many of the people out there in the audience are still kind of learning about Cloud Foundation. Exactly what is it? Um, I mean, mm -hmm. I learned it's not just a it's not just a package. It's not just a suite of say vSphere, vSAN, and NSX together. There's there's much more mm -hmm. to it than that. And SDDC Manager seems to be really that that biggest you know secret sauce that's in that mix. Yes. So so we do have some questions here from the audience, and I mean, I think mm -hmm. we've. Uh, done a great demo of uh, Cloud Foundation in roughly 30 minutes. So if anybody else, if you want to drop off, you can do that and, and get back to work. But if not, we got some questions here from the audience. So you know, stay tuned. Um, so the first one here is: Is vCenter included with with Cloud Foundation? Oh, great question. So um, uh, from a licensing licensing perspective, um, vCenter is not actually included in the in the licensing packaging. But all we actually require is you bring one license with vCenter. So when you look at Cloud Foundation, it, it will spin up multiple instances of, of vCenters for workload domains and management, but we're not actually charging you for those. those. We only need one license. Just bring one license of vCenter, and Cloud Foundation will accept that, and we'll spin up multiple instances of the vCenter, so just one. Got it, got it. And if I have, say, an existing vSphere infrastructure with vSphere and vCenter and vSAN, is there some way to move to Cloud Foundation? So Cloud Foundation is really targeted right now um, toward greenfield environments. So um, think of that existing environment, well, I'll call it a brownfield, so to speak. Um, SEC Manager and Cloud Foundation doesn't have the ability to communicate um, and say, say, take over or simulate like the Borg, if you will, the uh, your, your existing brownfield environment. Uh, it would be a, a parallel a parallel environment, in your, uh, parallel kind of SDDC. Um, you could always run them separately. You could do a you know, workload migrations, move workloads from one to, uh, from your brownfield over to the new um, Cloud Foundation instance, but they are, they would be separate. Got it, got it. And uh, Rod out there, he's asking, will we see Cloud Foundation with VX Rail? Um, I, I know there's been some talk and interest about that. Uh, I do not know, um, I can't speak to roadmap on that right now. Okay, okay, so stay tuned. Um, yeah. But good question, <laughs> thank you. And another yeah, question here question. is, um, 
it, how does v, VCF relate to VVD or the VMware validated designs? Do you have to use a validated validated design with VCF? Oh, so that's a great question. So um, those really, you can think of the VVDs as um, the build your own, right? If, you, if you're not, um, say you don't want to go all hypervergence, maybe you have blades, you have existing hardware, but you want to get to an SADC. So at that point, you can use a VMware Valley design to get to a full SDC by leveraging maybe existing investments. Like I said, maybe you have existing storage that right, you want to use. You maybe have blade servers. Uh, you want to build your own SDC using those. That's a great opportunity to use the VVDs for that, right? Where this comes into play is we want to take the concepts of the same practices that we use in the VVDs, but now we want to do it in a fully automated fashion for you. So it's taking the same practices and design guidance and deploy it automatically for you. You can still take a lot of the day two operations and guidance and and and, and same concept and lay over lay over. But uh, it is a valid. This is a validated and tested design. It does not an exact match to the same to the VVD just just yet. But stay tuned on more uh, more changes on that. Okay. Okay. And if I wanted to, so one option you're saying with VCF is to build my own. Um, mm -hmm. Another option is to I can can I buy VCF with hardware like packaged through a, yeah, totally. a VAR or yeah, someone totally. like that? Absolutely. So um, there's a couple different routes to, there's really three routes if you think about it to get VCF. Um, and I kind of bucket those into the, the private cloud, right? And the public cloud, right? So I mentioned, you know, IBM Bluemix has it on the public cloud space. And there's other providers like you know, VMware Cloud Air and the, what, we do, what we're doing with Amazon. But on the private cloud side, there's really two routes to market. Um, you can build it, build it yourself right by getting the specific uh ready systems and that's the specific uh vsan ready nodes and switches for tours and spines and management that we work with, we work with specifically um and you could build rack rack stack and cable it to the specification in the documentation all in the doc on documentation and then you can you can build it yourself now if you don't want to do that you can also go to an integrator right turnkey turnkey and so with that for example we use Dell talk about Dell EMC Dell EMC VX rack SDDC is that solution it's been all pre-configured with the specific Dell power edges they Dell power edges they use for their um, their cloud foundation instance uh, they use a specific set of uh, Cisco Cisco switches in that but it's all been racked stack cabled for you and has, the imaging has been done for you. So when it comes to you on site, it's ready for that power on system validation that we showed in that initial bring up demo, um, and it's ready to be configured for you. Um, there's also Fujitsu PrimeFlex is another one that's, av uh, that's available. Um, and I believe they use uh, their Fujitsu servers, and I think they might be using bro brocade switches. But those are two, two ways to, to market from an integrated perspective. Nice, nice. And if I went with one of those where we've got integrated hardware mm -hmm. and software, is there a single point of contact? Um, I believe there is a single point of contact with the uh, Dell the Dell EMC site. Yes. Awesome. I don't know much awesome. about the, uh, the 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 Fujitsu Prime Flex, but I know that there's a that's that single 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 point of contact with the Dell EMC site. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I think the last question we probably have time for is um, this person's asking how, you know, you said that SDDC manager does automation, but of course VMware also mm -hmm. has vRealize automation. So mm -hmm. how are those two similar and different? So they, this is a specific automation that's been specifically set up to instantiate the SDDC, right? To instantiate this build of the SDDC to manage things such as Deploying, um, deploying and configuring the environments, pulling them out of the pool of resources, configuring the host, um, expanding them, deleting them, you know, contracting them, things like that, um, as well as putting uh, Horizon, and, Horizon and such. It is a separate, is it is a separate automation tool specifically used um, to instantiate the SDDC using the unified platform. Um, it's all done, you know, by, behind the scenes. It's all API driven. We're using all the native product APIs, but it is not the same. Solution in the back end of say you know uh, VRealize Orchestrator. It's not the same, not same thing. It's not VRealize Automation. It's a very specifically tuned engine. Uh, work, you can think of it more of like a workflow engine, specifically for instantiating the SDC um, cool. in this in this environment. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Great question. Cool. Well, I think that's all we have time for. But really great demo today. Thanks so much for being on today, Ryan. Yeah. Totally. I appreciate it. Thank you, David.
Yeah, and thanks everyone out there in the audience for joining us today. You know, make sure that you check out uh, the URL that I put there in the chat of uh, vmwa.re slash vcf for more information on VMware's Cloud Foundation. Uh, and watch your email box for more invitations to join the actual Tech Media Democast series. Thanks, everyone, and have a great day.